Some of you may know of the IRT for their reputation of constructing the first rail subway for New York City. It ran between City Hall in Lower Manhattan on the current Lexington Avenue line and 145th Street on the current 7th Avenue Broadway line. With the first portion and a lot of the subsequent parts of the system being constructed during the early 1900s when New York City only had a fraction of its current population, the subway was built only to support the demand that was there at the time. From 300 feet to over 500 feet, most of the original IRT stations were extended in length to support the growing demand in the system. In this video, we'll be discussing why the IRT's platforms were extended, why some weren't, and why some stations ended up being closed because of the platform extensions. If you enjoyed this video, consider liking and subscribing to the channel. In the early 1900s, during the construction of the original IRT subway, New York City's population ranged just around 3.5 million people. Being that the subway was the first of its kind in the city, the IRT did not want to build too much more than what was required at the time. This was very different from the IND, which built, well, this. The IND, unlike the IRT, built to withstand the demand of the future, rather than what the demand was at the time. This is why their mezzanines were built so large, like 145th Street on the A, B, C, and D, and why their stations are 600 feet long. Yes, the stations were 600 feet from the beginning. The short 300 foot long stations of the original IRT worked for the first four decades of the subway. But following World War II, with New York City's population doubling, the IRT subway needed more capacity. Because of this, the contracts to extend the platforms throughout the entire IRT to over 500 feet were awarded in the late 50s, and by the end of 1965, the entire platform lengthening project was completed. Now, just because the entire project was completed, doesn't mean that every IRT platform in the system was extended. Stations like the former 18th and Worth Street stations on the IRT Lexington Avenue line and 91st Street on the 7th Avenue line were all closed and abandoned because of their proximity to other stations, which were recently extended. Currently, there only remains one in-service mainline IRT station that hasn't been extended, 145th Street on the 3 line. Throughout many places in the system, you can find the exact spots where the platforms were extended. They mostly all share the same bland 1960s design, the one that you see all throughout Grand Street on the B and D lines. I kinda wish that all of the platform extensions at least retain the original designs of the stations, but it is what it is. Only the mainline IRT lines run 10 car trains. The other two lines, the 42nd Street Shuttle and the 7 use different configurations. The Shuttle uses 6 car trains, while the 7 uses 11 car trains, the most in the system. However, the 7 does not have the longest trains in the system. While it uses 11 car trains, and the maximum number for other lines is 10, we have to remember that the IRT uses smaller trains than the IND and BMT. The IRT or A division uses 51 foot cars, while the IND and BMT or B division uses 60 foot cars, mostly. The normal length of a B division train is 10 cars for a 600 foot train. 
So with the 7 running 11 car 51 foot trains, we can say that it runs about 565 foot or so trains. Now off of that math and back to the history side of things. The 7 didn't always run 11 car trains. It actually was only extended to 11 cars in 1964 for the World's Fair and with the introduction of the R33 and R36 series of trains. Before that time, the 7 line ran 10 car trains, our current system standard. I assume the 7 was extended to 11 car trains for capacity reasons, but I couldn't find anything to back up those speculations. Talking about lines getting their trains extended for capacity reasons, there are currently two in the system that desperately need it. The C and the G. Those two though are a topic for a future video. I know this was a pretty random video about platform extensions, but I wanted to create it to explain to all of you the history of the platform extensions throughout the IRT and how they play a huge part in today's IRT. Surprisingly, there is a lot of history in them. Being a daily rider on some of the IRT lines, I'm on those extended platforms on a pretty frequent basis. I've definitely noticed the shift in design between the parts of the platform which were extended and the original parts of the stations. As you can see, it's not a very subtle shift between the two, and I wanted to acknowledge that in a video. I hope you enjoyed this extended tale from the subway. If you did, like, subscribe, and consider supporting me through channel memberships, Patreon, or Super Thanks. Special thanks to Stuart Guberman for joining the channel at the train operator tier.